Due to technical and live issues, the production value of this video was severely delayed. This show is much longer than my previous Toby Crate segments. The interview was recorded live with the intent of animated everyone in the show. Because of the length of this interview, this created technical production issues, and I was then swamped with rapidly profound changes to my life. What I am presenting is the full interview but not at full production value. I will continue to work on the issues and re-upload a finished version at a later time. Thank you for your patience and sticking with me. Hello, wonderful people, and welcome to the premiere of Toby Crate's Late Night, an animated show that brings on guests to talk about their experience and viewpoints on various LGBTQA plus issues and much, much more. Before we begin, I want you to know that you're all valid, you matter, and you are not alone. And tonight, neither am I. For joining us is the wonderful Casey Kelly, who often co-hosts on YouTube channel, Conversations with Regina. While we only met this year through the Chloe connection here on YouTube, I feel that we not only became fast and true friends, but also that I've gained a sister and I've gained a lot of respect for her. Tonight's topic will be about the division in the LGBTQ community created by those with large platforms. But before we begin, I implore everyone to like and share this video to help spread awareness of this important issue. Hi, Casey, and welcome to the premiere of my new animated show, Toby Creates Late Night. Hey, Toby, how's it going? Oh, it's going well. Why don't we start off with you telling us a little bit about yourself so our audience can get to know you a little bit better, just like I do. All right, where to start? Um, I am a co-host on Regina's show, as, as Toby mentioned. We recently just changed the name to Trans Voices of Love and Kindness. And I am the uh, writer and creator of a webcomic, Dreams into Reality Comics. If anyone who has watched any of, of Regina's recent shows will probably see my showcase as the cover page. But really, I just want to get out there like Toby, you know, like some people, and just give my experience to you, share with, with you my experience to give you something to think about, maybe to learn from if you choose. You know what, I can totally sympathize with your feelings too, because that's the whole point that I started Toby Creates. And of course I was inspired by Chloe. And so, you know, I, I, I think that the whole uh, aspect of hearts connecting to hearts is what really drives us. Absolutely. And I'll be sure to put all the links to Casey's webcomic and to Regina's show. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Dave Chappelle, <laughs> quite the controversy. For the audience who does not know, there's been a lot of outrage in the LGBTQA plus community, particularly the transgender community, over Dave Chappelle's latest and last Netflix episode, The Closer. Casey, I would like to know, what was your initial reaction to the news surrounding Dave Chappelle's latest show, The Closer? <sighs> Well, my, my initial, I initially ran across it scrolling through Facebook, as many people do, an article about someone who worked for Netflix uh, quitting because of the, of the controversy. And that was where I first heard about it. And that got me to look, looking into it. And when I, and when I started looking into it, it was like, oh, this is a, gonna snowball like badly 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 right like i never i was never fond of his comedy to begin with i often think it's a poor taste for me so i usually avoid it how 
However, for this particular issue, I chose to jump right into it and to see what it was about. I heard several viewpoints from several other people and I wanted to be able to come back with my own opinion, not necessarily just an opinion driven by someone else's thoughts. Mm -hmm. um, so I chose to jump into it and see what it was about. I, I was right to stay to usually stay away from this kind of stuff. I immediately almost regretted watching it, but I knew I needed to get get an opinion. So it, it, I'm mixed on it. It's it, it's there are some okay so some points where he, I'm like okay he's he, he's all right, and there are some points where I'm just like someone needs to get him off the stage right now before I slap on it. <laughs> well, um, well, you know, I went and watched the show too and, and and some other episodes in my own reading because like you, I wanted to get a more balanced viewpoint on it. To be honest, when I heard the first news about his show, I was very outraged. But it is so easy to let our emotions get the better of us and to jump the gun. So I watched the closer, read the articles, and watched Jesse Gender's video on this topic. For those who don't know, Jesse Gender is a popular and wonderful transgender YouTuber whose channel is about everything geeky and the effect it has on the LGBTQA plus community. I found Dave Chappelle was trying to make a point with an underlying message to try and heal and create bridges, but I found his jokes tended to be obfuscated by his intent and paradoxically to do the opposite. And to make matters worse, the jokes were very offensive to my identity as a white, fluid, transgendered woman. Casey. I've come to understand that you also watched the show and researched some of the, the same material, as you just said, because I suspect you wanted that same fair and balanced perspective. What was your reaction to Dave Chappelle to your own identity? Oh, oh where to begin? Where to begin? As I said, it, 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 it's a mixed, it was a mixed bag because not only can I identify with him on some points being a person of color myself, mm -hmm. but then there's the trans woman side where I have to back off and say, okay, wait a minute. I didn't quite like what you said there. Okay, that was okay. If he's going to talk about stuff like this, calling himself transphobic comedian, even in a joking manner, it's confusing and contradictory at the very least he goes on and mentions several different things that are just like off the wall was there anything specific like that you can recall oh geez um yeah there, there's several um the issue he, he gets into the bathroom issue, which, oh boy, we could have a whole nother show about just that. So I'll be brief. Mm -hmm. But he mentions the, you know, the, the bathroom issue. And it was upsetting because this is exactly the, one of the issues we have. This was literally one of the biggest ones recently, passing, you know, different states passing bills and laws telling us that we can we can and can't do certain things right using a public bathroom being one of them in that respect uh he was actually you know in favor of those laws not existing yeah which i, I appreciated course. yeah mm -hmm. but the way he went about it like you said it it, it tended to obsegate his his intent mm -hmm. he, he was trying to say one thing, but the particular words he chose didn't quite go that way. Going back to the bathroom thing, he was like, oh, you know, you know, you know this woman comes up, stands to the urinal next to me. And I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, okay, first of all, most trans women are not going to do that. Mm -hmm. That is just, that, that, like, 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 
we value our privacy just as much as the next person. We will go into the privacy of a stall and do our business. Because unless y'all are looking over or under the wall, and no one's going to know what's going on. I go, I go into the stall. You hear tinkling in the water. I come out of the stall. I wash my hands and go about my business. No one's any the wiser what, what, what I'm packing in my pants. By the way, if anyone ever cares, yeah. <laughs> um, I've got doom in my pants, you know, you know, doom and evil magic. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that describes pretty much all of us. We go in the bathroom to go to the bathroom or to do our makeup and hair. That's about it. And like the issue, like, like the issue with, you know, all the different people about, you know, Oh well, they're they're doing things with with people in the bathrooms, and I'm and I'm thinking to myself, what are you smoking? <laughs> Whatever it is, you need to share, because y'all are tripping. What even? Some like 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 I've heard some stupid stuff in my in, in my years, but oh my god, y- y'all on a whole new level. <laughs> Unfortunately. Now, based on Chappelle's show, I felt he did not properly research the issues. Not looking deeply enough and not considering there may be more than one viewpoint other than the ones that are aligned with his own. Casey, what is your perspective when famous people like Dave Chappelle, who use their platform to raise awareness specifically about transgender issues, but get their information from biased sources that only align with their viewpoints. For instance, the creator of Harry Potter, J.K. Rowling, and her statement and essay, which had many connections to Abigail Schreier, the author of Irreversible Damage. You know, that, that, that's one thing, like, it, it comes out along the, you know, along the, over the course of the show, and he even mentions it several times as well. He was like, oh, I didn't know what that word meant. I had to go look it up. This is one of the, the, the spots where I was kind of like, okay, maybe he's not so bad. He's just ignorant. And I use ignorant in the term, in, in the sense of he just doesn't know. And we can't necessarily... Uh, how is it he, that he said it? Uh, punch down on him because he doesn't know. But at the same time, we almost kind of can because the information is there. Just dig a little deeper and find it. Obviously, many of us have dug deep enough to find it to realize, oh, hey, this is me. So if we can find that kind of information to real to get a better whole a better grip on our personal identity you can find that same information dave to better understand us right it's not rocket science you don't need a phd for this <laughs> no it's not and you know uh, onto that i can understand that sometimes you don't know when you do have to look for something like certain terms um i've never even heard of before and we have such an ever-growing lexicon in both the transgender, um, just not just transgender, but the whole LGBTQ community. And it's going to keep growing and we're probably going to be say, we'll even say, what is that? (laughs) And I know that um, that happens on Chloe's uh, Discord all the time. I do have to say that I do appreciate that he does show or does recognize that he does have some ignorance and that takes a lot. So I think there is some growth there. Okay. So another thing I would like to address, unless there's anything more you want to add. Yeah. Just one real quick thing. Like one of the things that I didn't appreciate, like, and, I, and, I, and as I, as I said before, like I see where he wants to go with it. But his choice of words could have been better. I didn't appreciate how he said that trans people make up words just to win arguments. Okay, excuse me, wait a second. What? 
like, like, like the the superior people have been doing similar things for decades as well. But as always, the, it's the ones with the power that decide what's what. You know, us marginalized people, we're just making up words to win arguments. No, we're attempting to get our voices heard. And you know, if making up words is how we go about getting people to listen, then let's just start our own dictionary, the trans dictionary, <laughs> dictionary of the transmission, or whatever. Yeah, that's our latest joke lately, <laughs> the transmission. Yeah, you know, and you mentioned what about the people in power, and I agree with you on that. And but I think those people in power, it's either uh, our politicians who wants to use that as a subject to get them or get them into office or to keep them into office. So they cr- try to create a mob mentality, like c- certain politicians in the past that we know. Um, but also, it's our celebrities too. Their influence is a source of power, like. Dave Chappelle. Um, Sometimes they use it well. They use it in it with with a positive manner, like um, John Oliver. I I I really like watching his material. He's a fighter for us and other people too. You know, all kinds of communities. And I just he's really up in your face, and he can really hammer it home. But he doesn't have to resort to any type of slurs. And that's what I always loved about John. Okay, so another thing I would like to address is that during Chappelle's act, he makes this joke about TERFs, which stands for Trans-Exclusionary Radical Feminists, which is an active hate group and how they equate transgender women as black-facing cisgender women, saying that we are mocking them. I balked at this statement. For those who don't know, Blackface was a makeup technique in vaudeville used to mock the black community. However, I found this not only to be offensive to my belief in equal rights, but also I found it offensive because I'm a transgender woman and so many of my friends who I deeply care about are as well. Casey, I would like to know your reaction to that part of Chappelle's show. And since it was brought up, how do you feel about the TERF organization? Well, first of all, what we need to do is just take everybody who is involved in the turf organization, line them up, and just go down the line and smack them all. <laughs> like a three like speed. Oh, yeah, exactly. Just down the line. <laughs> because how can you call yourself a feminist? But then contradict yourself at the same time and i know you know most of most of them are most of them are the, are the ones that you know will, will go and constantly you know misgender people um they're the ones you know they're the ones that will, that will argue you know about uh caitlin jenner J- uh, jenner's dead name and this that and the other it's it, it comes back to a lack of understanding as well as a, a lack of basic human respect and when, when you know when when he came out and said oh i'm team turf and he was and he was like well i'm a feminist there's more to it than that it, it it's you can't just walk around saying i'm a feminist i'm a feminist um because especially now with the term turf, the word feminist is starting to get a bit of a bad rep. And in order to bring that back, we have to squash the concept of of the turf, which is silly in its in its own mind. I, I, I won't go and go into that, but. I get the reason why Chappelle chose to misgender uh, Jenner in the first place in the way he did. It doesn't make it right, but I do understand it. Um, 
And when he makes the comparison to Cassius Clay getting his name changed, I had to stop. I had to, I had to stop, and I was like, because it was a name that I didn't recognize before. So I looked. I had to Google it real quick, and I realized that Cassius Clay is the birth name of Muhammad Ali. I was like, oh, I just learned something new today. And then what he said made more sense. It was easier for Jenner to change her gender than it was for Cassius Clay to change his name. And from my own personal experience, I realized that that was an issue. I did a lot of researching in regards to getting my name changed and the, the, the hassle that it, that, that it required to do it yourself and save money. There was so much additional stuff we needed to do. And I ended up spending $1,500 to have a lawyer do it. The lawyer took care of everything. Everything, literally everything. I went in, signed the papers. I got, he sent me stuff in the mail saying when things were going. And that was the last I heard of it until I got the final letter saying everything's official. Oh, that must have been a great feeling like, you saw that paper. Oh my God, I danced around the living room for an hour. <laughs> um, I, I, like I didn't even I hadn't even told anybody yet, and I'm standing here dancing I'm dancing in my living room waving this piece of paper in the air and my family's looking at me like what just happened and I finally stopped and showed them and they were like oh yeah yeah and, but like when I when, when I looked it up and, and and saw that I was like okay well yeah I see I see Dave's point oppression against people of color has been an issue for decades and that's another one of the big issues that has to be squashed along with things like turf and and phobias and this, that, and the other. And I understand, you know, people have phobias of spiders. That's that, that, that that's one thing. I get that. That, that. That's a perfectly fine phobia. But to be homophobic, to be transphobic, that is just a lack of knowledge and a lack of respect for our rights as on the base level as human beings once we get past that we can get we can go anywhere but we have to continue doing so with love and kindness because the moment we stop doing that they immediately start pointing things and say see see this is what we're talking about and then we become no better than them you know, and I think you hit the nail on the head with that, because um, from my experiences, people fear what they don't understand. If they don't understand our community or, or respective communities, um, you know, they're all different parts, right? And you're basically bringing up white privilege, and it is a thing. Um, now, white privilege varies in strength from person to person because it depends on their economic status how they grew up where they grew up um and what they were taught now it still is a thing no matter what because just like you were bringing up about changing your name that you found yourself going over more hurdles than you should have had to and i think that's just ridiculous <laughs> Um, I also like how you bring brought up that uh, Dave, uh, you know, considers him a feminist, and I really did kind of like that little part when he was when he was looking up what feminist meant in the dictionary, and was pointing out that it can be a person, not a specific gender or whatnot, that anyone can be a feminist because you believe in equal rights for women and before I came to terms or even understood that my gender actually could be different than my assigned sex um, I always considered myself a feminist even though it I didn't look like a woman or that you know and I always felt like people wouldn't understand that I understood and that I felt 
And I think that is part of the turf problem is they don't get that. They are self segregating themselves. Um, I've seen evidence of that self segregation and it really makes me sad because when we segregate ourselves and then we have the powers that be that want to segregate us even more that creates more division. And we're never going to learn from each other if we're separated. We can't build those bridges. We cannot create understanding if we're burning those bridges down by doing this. And, you know, it hurts. It sometimes almost lose some hope about it, to be honest. Yep, I feel you there. How can we call ourselves united when we're so divided? Exactly. I know, pretty deep, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Since we brought up white privilege and that Dave Chappelle brings up white privilege in his show, but he brings it up that there's white privilege in the LGBT community and claims that even though he acknowledges that we are all marginalized, why LGBTQ people will use that privilege if they feel threatened or angered, particularly if they are a white transgender woman, to call the police. However, I feel he fails to consider many white transgendered women and men will not do this out of fear, especially if they are not passing or we might find ourselves in a geographical location that is not safe for us, even from the police. I also feel that he's also ignoring the fact that Black transgendered women are even more marginalized and are often the subject of attacks, which are often deadly, which, which I might add deeply saddens me, physically sickens me, and scares the hell out of me. Casey, I would like to know, and I know this is a sensitive question, but from your perspective, what do you think and how do you feel about this whole tangled up ball of marginalization? Does he make a point or is there something more going on here? Um, well, from the perspective of a person for myself, that's part of what makes it right because there are parts of it that I understand that he says, especially when he talks about the, you know, the, the, the part that revolves in a person of color. But then on top of that, we have to add, uh, we add, as I said before, we add in the transgender issue. And now I've literally just escalated my level of fear two, three times. I get to the I, I'm I get to the point now and I've like, I've seen so many reports on not necessarily even just trans people of color or even trans women of color, but just regular people of color who are harassed by police on a regular basis. Um I think there was one he was a I, uh, there was a gentleman who was a teacher and he got stopped. I don't remember why he got stopped, but like he had all of his documents in, 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 in order and he was being, um, oh geez, what's the word I'm looking for? You know, he was being respectful and cooperating. There it is. He was cooperating with, with the police and he still ended up, ended up dead. He, and he, like, like, he wasn't even, oh, oh, his music was, you know, your music's too loud or, or you're out after after dark. Oh my lord! Like, I was on my way home from my brother's house one one night. We we're nerds. We play Dungeons and Dragons, and um, we were on our way home after after a game night. It was me, my wife, and my three kids in the car. And just because I was the one in the driver's seat, we come we pass a certain street and. We get killed by a police officer. He stops us, comes up, 
you know, well, what are you doing up? We just, we're leaving my, we're coming home from my brother's house. We were just playing, you know, having game night. But like, just because I'm a person of color behind the wheel, the, the you know, said police officer decides he wants to go and fill his quota. The marginalization, it, it sickens me as well. But it's an issue that I've unfortunately had to deal with all my life. And many of us, we get to a point, some of us get to a point where we, where we get used to it. Don't get me wrong, we're still scared shitless, but um, we get to a point where we can kind of get used to it enough to attempt to go out and live our lives as, as human beings because take away all the labels black white hispanic native american transgender cisgender gay lesbian whatever you take away all the labels down to the base we are human beings we are all human beings and that's the biggest thing that we share in common The labels just show our uniqueness. That should not be a reason to pick on someone. It, 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 he makes a point, but again, the words he uses just kind of fail at getting that point across. It might have been a decent show if he had a word checked himself a little more often while doing it. Um, and that, has, that, that says something about the audience too, because several shots of the audience, I could definitely, even though it was kind of dark, I could definitely see some variance in, in demographics there. So that just goes to sh further show that even other demographics participate in the marginalization too. It's like I said before, how can we be united? We, how can we call ourselves united if we're so divided? It's like you said, like you said, it, it, it often makes you lose hope. And um... I find it interesting that you, you bring up labels and that we use it to, to try and describe our unique uniqueness. Um, labels, I feel that are, are a very interesting tool and problem at the same time. It's a double-edged sword. Yeah. Um, it helps us communicate complex ideas or inner our inner selves so we can say this is what makes me unique or this is my pain or this is my joy or this is my pride but unfortunately it's a double-edged sword because the groups of people who dislike us for whatever reason um, will use these labels against us twisting them around and using those labels to even mock us I don't know many of the LGBTQ community we've had to take back some of our own words um, and I know that was done in the black community too I've seen it and when we take back the power of words that were used against us, I think that is a wonderful thing. And it's just one of those small victories, you know, that can keep us going and give us a little bit of hope. <laughs> The one part of Chappelle's show that I enjoyed 
and thought was beautiful was his story about Daphne Thorman. I felt it showed he has the potential for growth and it told a good lesson about the importance of the human condition and more. Then he explains how she defended him on Twitter and she was verbally attacked by an onslaught of tweets. After the sixth day, she committed suicide. And one can only assume the onslaught of hate came from most Twitter attacks. And many of those attacks came from the LGBTQ community, specifically a good portion of the transgender community. He claims this is all a true story. And after checking, I found out it was. I was instantly crying when I read up and heard about her because I found she was the same generation as I am, only by a few years difference. I found this heart wrenching because, I mean, not only was a fellow transgender woman's, you know, committed suicide from the tax of her own community, but here was someone like me, same age, same generation, probably even had similar experiences. And yet, to be taken down is like a betrayal like that. And I... I find this heart-wrenching that some in our community would act this way, and this doubles down on my dislike of tribalism. I honestly believe the whole idea that you are either with us or against us mentally is not only tearing the LGBTQA plus community apart, but also this country. It's so polarizing and it's discrediting this divide. Casey, how do you feel about Chappelle's ending story about Daphne and her tragic end? Also, what are your thoughts on tribalism in our collective communities? Um, I will admit I didn't necessarily have a, have the chance to uh, dig into uh, Daphne, but um, I think my wife actually looked up looked it up. I think that's what. So, anyways. Um, but I didn't specifically get the chance to do that. Um, but I do have to say his bit at the end regarding Daphne. Again, he did not necessarily use the, you know, the, the best words he could have. But if you stop and look closely at his face and his body language, you can actually tell that it's that it's that it was really something meaningful to him. It it, it hit him hard. And then him talking about the relationship the two of them had as comedians, as even marginalized people, it it, it definitely did level the playing field for them. And I think he found a really good friend in Daphne. He um, stood up for her during the during the one show, and then she turns around and stands up for him online. And that just goes to show the the what what. That just goes to show what we really need to be doing as a people. We need to be standing up for each other, not you know punching, punching down the other person. I, I think that's a really silly way of saying it. But, um, and then there was the one, the part where she, where she says that she just wants him to believe that she's having the human experience. That's all, all we, any of us, are doing. We're, we're having the human experience. The only thing is, the terrain is different for some of us. 
Some of us have rocky terrain, some of us have snowy terrain, some of us have mountainous terrain, some of us have grassy plains, some of us are swimming through, a, a, you know, whatever. But we're all still having the same human experience. And his, his, his response to that did give me a little faith in the fact that, like you said before, he is growing. When he said, uh, when he said to her, I believe you because it takes on the no one. I had to stop and, and I had to rewind that and listen to that section several times. And I, that's where I realized that he really found they were on us a level playing field where they were equals in several, in several instances of the word. It takes one to know one. It, it, it was like a true soul to soul connection, the kind of connection that is easy to to um, easy to see at possible false false connections but difficult to find a real true connection like the two of them had. And uh, I, I've, I've talked about talked about this to several other people, my mom, several other trans people. Um, and he is, he's ignorant. He's unknowing and that's all it really is. Now, the way he goes about using his lack of knowledge on certain topics to make money on in comedy that's another story but we're all learning mm -hmm. no one person says they know everything can can, uh, can truthfully say they know everything well, my uh, my aunt always joked about being perfect and so but but it was but it was just like the way she handled it she she knew she wasn't and she joked around and showed that everyone is human we just have to we just, it's just going about it in a way that's not going to demoralize others yeah that is a very interesting point and you made very a lot of interesting points um i like how you brought up about um trying to be human the human condition the human experience and i like how you described it as as a journey in my mind the human experience is like we're all climbing a mountain and you have people who are only out for themselves and sometimes they'll make it to the top but sometimes they'll fall. But I think that the people who look out for their fellow climbers will eventually make it to the top. So maybe if we reach out our hand, we can all get there. Something that I've noticed that many people, okay, sorry. You know, there's something that I've noticed that many people these days tend to get awareness of current events and issues, not from mainstream news, but from social media and strangely enough, comedians. For instance, like I'm a big fan, like I mentioned, of John Oliver of Last Week Tonight because he brings around awareness through his humorous script but also has teams that do proper research. Trevor Noah is another comedian. Trevor Noah is another comedian who does similar. I've also known both John and Trevor to admit when they made a mistake or when it was wrong. However, there are those who do not properly research or fact check or would even do a retraction, which is a problem. Casey, I think everyone knows that there is a huge problem concerning miscommunication and fake news. 
it is said that we must rely on comedians to find out what is really going on in the world and not from what should be trusted news sources. What are your thoughts and feelings on this? Um, the thing about miscommunication and it's something that many people can will, will probably agree with me on if you want the facts go to the source if you want to learn about how people of color were treated go talk to people of color go survey a bunch of you know, a bunch of people of color if you want to find out how the american indians were treated go survey them ask them ask how they were treated on their reservations their land if you want to learn about the struggles that LGBT community is going through, walk into a Pride Center and ask somebody. It's literally the easiest way, the easiest and the probably the most accurate way of finding out the truth, the facts, because we're the ones living those lives. We know what's going on. We're seeing this first person. Other people are seeing it third person. We are literally seeing this first person. So we know what's going on. This is literally every hour, every second of every day of our lives. And for the most part, most of us are going to be like, you want to know? Sure, I'll tell you. I'd rather, I'd rather, you know, sit here, you know, even if I have to sit here uncomfortable for 10 minutes so that you get the correct information, I'd rather do that than you go and spew for a half an hour ridiculous stupidity that's barely even close to the truth because you have no idea or because you didn't look up proper sources. We're here. Your sources are here. Just come talk to us. I will gladly sit and talk with someone. Absolutely no problem. If you want to know my viewpoints and perspectives as a trans woman, person of color, I will gladly sit here and tell you my experience. And that was one of the reasons why I decided to create my webcam. Because I've seen several and it made sense. It's like, that is my story. That is my experience. And I may not necessarily need to go and you know, have a live interview like this or go on a talk show kind of thing like I do with Regina for people to still get the information because it's coming directly to me. Here, here's my webcomic. Here is my story laid out with a little bit of humor stuck in there but my story laid out for you to learn if you got any other questions sure come ask me but here's the facts as seen from a person living the life exactly and those are very good points um i think he, the problem even goes a little bit deeper than just like how you described it, that they're getting it from a third point of view. I feel that it is actually more like the whisper game. That telephone. That's, yeah, telephone. That there, it, it's like telephone or it's the whisper game. We, in kindergarten, that's one of the first games they taught us. And they said, okay, you're gonna whisper this to the next person and next person, next person. And by the time it got to the last child in the classroom, the teacher said, okay, now tell the class what you said or what you heard. Tell the class what you heard. And the child said, purple monkey butt, when it was Melissa likes apples. (laughs) 
slight difference in interpretation, really. Yes. There's... I think that I understand why this happens. I mean, we're all hardwired to respond more to stories. And so that's why we like gossip so much. Um, but every time a story is told, we might not get it 100% accurate, or we may add our imagination to it to fill in the gaps. And slowly that information, that original story, slowly degrades. So getting it straight from the horse's mouth, so to speak, you know, <laughs> to use an idiom. I, I love idioms. They're interesting to find out their sources. Um, I agree with you, but what I really like is that you are trying to convey that information in your point of view through your story of your webcomic. And I think that is a very valid way of sharing that to spread awareness. Um, we get that from movies. We get that from novels. We get that from comic books. We get that from just sharing, you know, this one time in the third grade, little Johnny Walker, you know, punched me in the stomach and then stole my lunch. But when you hear that coming from a friend, you go, oh, you're captivated and you want to know more. We are hardwired to learn from stories. The ancient Greeks knew this, you know, and, and all the different tribes um, on, on the continent of, of, uh, of Africa. Now, they're all different countries. A lot of people don't get that, but... Um, they all have their own oral traditions. The one thing I think that we all share in common is that we are hardwired to want to know each other's stories. And that's why we enjoy our books and our movies and our comic books and even our video games these days because now they're narrative. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing how far it's come. And for that very reason that you are trying to reach out to people through your webcomic, that's what I'm doing through my content here on Toby Creates. It's also what I'm trying to do through my writing because I'm still writing uh, an anthology book. It's a modern fantasy world. Um, and I finally got back to writing the last short story. Um, just so much has happened in my life and then I got sidetracked with creating Toby Creates. Um, this has been my year of change in more ways than one. <laughs> but me writing that story, for me telling my long story short show on, on my channel, it's for the same reason that you're doing your web series. If we all share our stories, then maybe that would actually be the one thing that pulls us together that we share each other's stories. You know, and Dave Chappelle, he does that because he told Daphne's. And it was very touching. Okay, so we've already covered a lot, but is there anything that you would like to discuss about this topic that I may have forgotten about, missed, or wasn't even aware of? Um... Just one quick thing. It was it was another another point that that you know uh, we had been talking earlier about like the language people use in different you know communities. Um, and I understand like that's how he is, but it was it was still his regular use of the word bitch to refer to women it just left a bad taste in my mouth it, it was like it was like he was dropping it here there and everywhere and like like I, I understand that like that was part of his comedy routine to help 
get the point across and you know tell the punchline. But like there are people, there are other comedians who can do who can do the same thing without without the slurs. Like you want to talk about being a feminist, but then you go and rap slurs against women. Another contradictory point. It, it's and like the other like the other thing about that too is though being a person of color myself, other people of color will look at me and it, like I said before, expect me to act in a similar way based on visual stereotype. And they give and they 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 they're surprised when I don't act that way. Go going as far as calling me white, and I'm just like, okay, um, um. I guess so. I, I, um, I, I, I used to crack this joke in college. It was my opening line in college. Um, I was like, "You can call me. You, uh, you can, my nickname's Oreo." <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Um, yeah, I had I had the entire dorm cracking up when I said that, and that's actually how I met my wife too. So, <laughs> um. But like, one of the things about that was that I realized that I had to, in, in, that in order to not take offense to it, I had to bash on myself. And, you know, it was kind of a, you know, if you don't laugh, you cry kind of thing. So I would just crack jokes about myself regularly. Regularly, I do some mess something up, and I was like, "I can't take black people anywhere," and you know, things like that. And, and 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 people would look at me like, "Did you hear what this one just said?" I was like, "Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, hi, I'm an Oreo. I ride skateboards and listen to rock music. Uh, uh, you know, and, and like 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 they cover their mouths in shock. It's like, oh my lord, like what, like like I've never seen this before." And I'm like, it, it, it's, that's my uniqueness. But we can get by without the slurs. The slurs are one of the biggest dividers in the whole thing. And if we just, if we get rid of the slurs, we, we reduce the labels to just being identifiers of uniqueness. That will bring us to a more unified human race. I think that's really funny that you bring up, not really funny, actually. Well, I'm kind of funny because you're making fun of yourself, but I'm taking it all seriously um, because I found that when I make fun of myself or when some of my friends make fun of themselves, it makes the people around them feel a little bit safer for some reason. It lowers their guard down and it shows a willingness to examine yourself, to make fun of yourself on whatever subject. Um, like, even though he's probably with one of the most racist persons on there, uh, Rodney Dangerfield was like that. I mean, he used to make fun of everyone, but he made fun of himself at the same time. So he could get away with it. Mel Brooks is another good example. But these comedians can't even do that these days without actually getting flack. Despite they're doing it right unlike certain comedians that we've been talking about. Um, I remember um, I would always use this personal joke of mine where, you know, you know, it's, per it, it, it's important to laugh about ourselves. That's why I look in the mirror each morning. <laughs> okay, that was a good one. That, Thank that, you. That, that, that was good one. Um, and how you describe yourself as an Oreo 
And um, I'm like, oh, bye. But, you know, any kind of defenses I had left that around you, I felt them drop even a little bit more because you had a sense of humor about yourself. Because you're willing to drop some of your guard. You know, it's almost like an arms race. I have um, an Asian, a uh, couple of Asian friends who make the joke that they're Twinkies. And I go, oh my God, you did not just say that. And But the same effect happens is that the defenses are lowered around the people that are around them. And they laugh more, they're more willing to engage. Um, so humor and stories, I think that's a good way to heal the world. Yeah. And like comedians have the right idea because there's humor and stories both in comedy. There are many comedians who make up their material based on their own life. And you know, I like um Jeff Foxworthy is one of the one of the ones I can think of who literally like most of his comedy skits were about things that happened to himself. Um, one, he was, you know, he was uh, making fun of his wife. You know, they were sitting watching late night TV, and you know the the infomercials would come on. Do you have this? Do you have that? So, humor and stories are already be, like like you said. That's how we communicate. That's how we become aware of ourselves and aware of each other and lower our guard. But the, the problem is with many comedians, with many people in general, you just have to know how to do it the right way. The right way. The right way. Exactly. Now, is there anything that you would like to uh, add on? Um, it can be about your webcomic. It can be about anything really that you know that you want to contribute to this uh first premiere episode really it's um we'll drop the links for everything down below in the description um you know like and subscribe because toby is an amazing person and full of wisdom of her own and just a, a pleasure to, uh, it's always a pleasure to speak with you um, and i i i think we i think we could do we you know i, I could stand with you know come and do a few more of these with you that I, I i this this was fun this was fun i would enjoy that okay so before we end this episode i have a surprise for you so um i'm sending it to you right now so go ahead and uh Check your email. Beautiful. God, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, my God. Love it. I was so hoping that you would like that. It's just something that I want to do on all my episodes that each of my new guests are going to get a cartoon liking of this. And this is how you are going to show up on this episode. <laughs> It's awesome. Oh my God. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Oh. Oh, I, I, I don't even, I, I, you rendered me speechless. I don't even know what to say. Oh.
Uh, I think I do need to go cry some more. <laughs> I'm gonna let you go, sweetie. Oh, you're gonna miss it. Oh, that's okay. Again. Happy tears are always allowed. <laughs> always, always. And that goes for everybody else, too. Uh, it's, be who you are. You are valid. We love you. And always remember that even if they're not necessarily standing right next to you, you've got someone in your corner all the time. We are here. And that's why we make the content we make. To bring the happy tears. That's beautiful. I hope everyone has a good night. And thank you so much, Toby. Oh, you're welcome. So welcome, Casey. And thank you for coming to the premiere episode of my new show and to provide your unique and valuable insight. I also want to thank everyone for watching and to give a shout out to my patrons. Lastly, I want to remind you all that you're all valid. You are not alone. And I love you all. Bye-bye. <laughs>